Everybody hates Mondays. But by the sound of my voice, I've made Mondays more interesting. My name is Denzel Gaga, and I am the host of the Make Mondays Interesting podcast. And this is a God-given talent production brought to you by Pamelia Accountants, financial solutions for your family. On today's episode, I am joined with high school friend of mine, Jackson Free. So enough of me speaking. Enjoy today's episode. Jackson, for those who don't know you and, you're, and you meet someone for the first time, how are you introducing yourself? What is there to know about you? Uh, usually, usually they ask me, do I play basketball? Uh, so if anyone knows, I am six foot eight. And, you know, straight away, they're like, wow, you're tall. I'm like, yeah. Hi, I'm Jackson. Nice to meet you. Um, yes, I am tall. No, I don't play basketball. Uh, I row. So I do a lot of rowing. Um, and that's why Denzel's got me on here today, just to talk about a bit about rowing. Um, apart from sport, I also study as, at uni as well. So I'm just doing my master's in architecture. Um, and apart from that, there's not really too much to me, really. Um, but yeah, just keeping busy, you know, just hanging out like this. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Well, um, Jackson, because you just mentioned rowing, can you tell us now your surname is Free? Some That's people right. might know that surname. Um, but for those who are unaware, can you please explain a bit of your family background in the rowing uh, world? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, in the rowing world, especially in Australia and probably around the world as well, uh, the, free, the free surname is quite up, quite up there. Um, so obviously at a, at a young age, I didn't really you know, too much, know too much about it and didn't really think much of it. Um, but, you know, as I got older, I kind of realized, wow, like, you know, this is a cool sport and, um, you know, my family's done pretty well at it. Um, and I thought, you know what, well, I'll just give it a crack. So, yeah, so my um, my grandfather, he wrote, he started rowing probably a long time ago. Yeah, around wow. the, uh, He did quite well around the 60s and 70s, um, you know, Australian representative, um, all of that stuff. And then um, my uncle and my dad as well, they have also rode for Australia. Mm -hmm. um, and then my uncle also went on to um, win a gold medal uh, at the Beijing Olympics in 2008. Um, and also went to, you know, three other Olympics as well. So um, I figured, you know, I might give it a crack. I might do pretty <laughs> well at it. Who knows? Um, but yeah so it kind of runs in the family a bit so yeah so it's all very exciting <laughs> yeah wow and talking about your uncle um particularly because he won gold at beijing were you there or were you watching that race particularly real quick yeah yeah so i i remember it very very um very fondly um yeah. i think we went around to our cousin's cousin's place to watch it you know as a family yeah um uh, and you know and obviously it might have just been you know because of the rowing but um everyone was obviously you know watching the tv and <laughs> the power dropped out and right before the race oh, wow. we were all freaking out like especially mum and like all the aunties and anyway so <laughs> we had to like run you know next door and be like oh hi can we <laughs> borrow your tv type thing so i remember that very very clearly that we were you know pretty hectic uh trying to watch you know trying to watch the finals the final race um but yeah it was it was all very cool um and yeah so describe that feeling of watching your uncle win gold and the i don't know the inspiration that may have been put into you watching that race yeah yeah so um, I think at the time I was only around, ooh, like, I was in grade five, so probably like, you know, you know, 10 or 11, something like that, yeah. maybe. 12 know, years, but, 12 years, because it's 2020, yeah. 2008, yep. <laughs> yep. Um, 
Yeah, so at the time when I saw the race, you know, I just figured, oh, I didn't realise how, you know, how important it was. You yeah. know, like that, that was the biggest race for his life and for a lot of people in that race as well. Um, and, you know, nothing really, you know, clicked in my head. Like, you know, you'd hear a lot of stories in that similar um, experience where, you know, I saw that race and something just clicked in my head. It wasn't really like that for me. Yeah, well, um, it was kind of just because I hadn't really, you know, started rowing. I really didn't know too much about it. I think it's just something over time that I kind of grew into that I'm like, you know, when I first started rowing, I'm like, oh, you know, I'll give this a go. I fell out a couple of times. I'm like, no, there's no way I'm doing this. Um, and then, you know, so it's just over time. So I've probably only been rowing for the last, you know, five or six years. Um and, you know, it's just gradually built up. And, yeah, it's just, it's just over time something I'm like, okay, you know, I actually do want to pursue this, like, you know, professionally, just mm. like the rest of my family have. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how I perceived it in a way. Um, yeah, so it's... Cool. Yeah. And so now that you're in the world of rowing yourself and pursuing it yourself, what is the end goal or what are the dreams that you're wishing to achieve heading in that direction? Yeah. So I guess my, my goals in rowing um, is definitely, you know, the Olympic level, which is cool. for every athlete, the highest, you know, the possible level you can go with the individual sport. Um, so obviously my goal was, um, you know, kind of always going to be, Paris 2024 um you know because it just fits in with me and you know with my part-time uni work and my master's it kind of all just lines up perfectly yeah well. um and age-wise as well so um but then coronavirus came up and <laughs> kind of changed a lot for a lot of people um and you know with the virus being someone else's you know, issue, it kind of gave me like a second chance in a way, um, you know, because I kind of always, you know, brushed off 2020 Tokyo Olympics as like, oh, you know, I guess, you know, if this, if we were doing this, you know, a year, you know, a year later, sorry, a year just gone, I would have been like, oh, you know, it's the Olympics in next year. I um, haven't really thought about it too much. Um, yeah. Whereas, you know, this whole season, it's kind of like, I mean, you know, it's just kind of, it's like a different way of seeing things in a way. Mm. And, you know, I've, at, at the end of that, I've got like, you know, nothing to lose. There's, I'm not, you know, at the end of that, I'm just going to give it a crack and see how I go in a way. Um, yeah. So I guess that's the goal. So, you know, see what happens over the next couple of months uh, leading up to the Olympics in, in Tokyo in July. And, you yeah, know, cool. who knows? <laughs> Yeah. Well, we'd love to all see you there. We'll be watching, or yeah. hopefully be watching on the telly. You yeah, win yeah. gold for Australia in <laughs> rowing. Um, so, actually, question, because yeah. now you're pursuing that Olympic dream. Yeah. You've got, your, you've got family heritage in the Olympics. Like, honest question, um, yeah. I'd love to get your honest thoughts. Do you ever feel pressure yeah. um, having to live up to some expectation or feel pressure of like having to bring honour to the free surname? Yeah, yeah, no, I see what you mean. And that's probably one of the most asked questions when people ask about, you know, my rowing. Um, mm. I wouldn't say, I think when I, you know, started rowing, um, there was that little bit of pressure. Yeah. You know, being like, okay, you know, my whole family have done quite well in this, you know, and then I have to do quite well in this type thing. Mm. Um, but I'd say it's it kind of ch changed the way I saw it. Kind of when I finished school, it kind of changed a bit, being like, okay, I'm a little bit older now. I've, you know, had a few years in the boat by this point. Um, you know, and it was kind of a similar time as well when my grandfather passed away as well. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say like he was on his bed when he was saying this, but I just remember in the last couple of months when he passed away, just, you know, like just 
quietly or briefly being like, you know, like, you know, I know you, you know, your dad and your uncle rode, but like, don't, don't stress too much about them rowing, like kind of not like forge your own path, but like, you know, it's, it's okay to deviate, mm. you know, to make your own little, little way around getting there in a way. So, yeah. You know, and like, I've always thought of that. So I figured, you know, it's just at the end of the day, like I row because it's fun um, and I enjoy it. And, you know, you get a good work out of it as well. Um, <laughs> and, you, you know, and the amount of people you meet as well in it, it's just, it's a fun sport. And obviously the plus is that my family have done well in it in the past. So I figured why not just stick to it? <laughs> yeah. 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 I think that's a really uh, wise attitude to have towards pursuing, uh, well, in your case, rowing. Because yeah. I think it's, it is a real problem in our society where most of us can't, not all of us, but there is a handful of us that can come from a family of what you could say greatness or family that's achieved so much for their lives. And then there's this, extra pressure on this next generation coming up of like we have yeah. to we have to do just as great as the generation before us and bring yeah. on our and, and i don't know like i think for me also it's um it's definitely a real thing that i've experienced of like yeah pressure from parents and um yeah i think it uh, it's a valuable uh it's a great discussion to have with people our yeah. age. Yeah, so, yeah, for sure. Um, really just understand that because I think you've got the right mentality. Mm. And my hope is that whoever's listening to this right now can apply that same mentality with their own lives that, hey, don't worry about, in a way, forge your own path, yes, or yeah. um, don't, don't put pressure on yourself from because it's like our destiny is not our parents destiny or our yeah, yeah. generation before us destiny it's like this we've got our own path forge your own path saying yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've got our yeah, own yeah. path or own things to achieve um yeah. and it's a i don't know it's a great attitude from what i'm hearing from you that you're having is just give it a go mm. give it a crack yeah exactly um, and can you can you talk to me about that can you can I ask in regards to how do you maintain that mindset of no matter what the end result is, I'm just giving it my best because yeah honestly there's a lot of people that can be so caught up in I have to succeed, I have to succeed, I have to succeed, yeah, and not do the I'm just going to give it a crack. So yeah. explain to me how you maintain that mindset. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, surprisingly with rowing, how physical it is, a big part of it is very mental. Um, mm. It's a high, like, I'm not trying to talk it up or trying to say it's better than anything else, but like I've found it to be, you know, very difficult mm. um, and it's very hard. Um, and yeah, on the mental side, one of the things that, you know, that I guess in a way, you know, dad taught me, it was like, you know, if you got, you always kind of look at the big picture, like don't worry about these small little things too much. Like, that's good. Like my goal, you know, at the end of the day, my goal was, you know, the Olympics, which is always, you know, every four years. So I've got in a way, like, you know, a bit of time to work on it. And the goal that I want is like, you know, a couple of years away and like <laughs> to have a goal, you know, that we're talking, you know, years or if not, you know, could work out to be, you know, a decade and a bit away. Mm. Um, you know, it's very hard also to like think that, wow, that goal is so far away. Yeah. But, you you know, you kind of just, you know, you know, reset yourself being like, okay, just work. You kind of work back from it. So, you That's know, good. if this is your long-term goal, you're like, okay, what do I, how do I get that? Okay. This is what I need to do by then. And you kind of like work your way back from it. So, you know, like even this morning I had training, you know, 4.30 in the morning, getting up there right and early. Wow. Um, you know, we had some, you know, longer, longer, you know, 
some pretty solid pieces. And um, what I, you know, always do is kind of like, you know, in the, when I'm doing the work, I kind of break it up into little pieces. Mm. So let's say, you know, we do like a 10 minute piece, just rowing as hard as you can. Um, what I try and do is, you know, break it up in just the one minute pieces. Mm. So, you know, after each one minute, I'm like, Hey, I've done one minute. I'll just do another minute and another minute on that. So, you know, and it, and I guess when you're doing the, the rowing, the sport itself, you know, you kind of break it up. So you, you're not thinking about the big picture because mm. if you take it all in at the one time, you're like, wow, this is, this is big. And, you know, when you do that, that's when, you know, a couple of issues come up being like, okay, you know, you kind of like doubt yourself and all that yeah. stuff. And that's why I kind of like, you know, avoid that because you that's don't good. want to doubt yourself. You know, you, you've got, you know, you've got to back yourself up when you do it. Mm. Um, in believing yourself <laughs> yeah um you know as much of a, a cliche it is but um yeah so you know gotta yeah so yeah mental is very important and you know not just in sport um you know mental side is huge um in er anything you do in life really um you know assignments or work or anything you know um, it's the way at the end of that, it's like, you know, the way you perceive it and how you can cope with it and how, you know, you can get the work done really. And, you know, at the end of that, the work always has to be done. Someone's got to mm. do it. Um, and it's just the way that you can deal with it and can do it really. Yeah. So I guess in a way, yeah, it's really, you don't want to like complicate it too much. Just keep things simple and it should mm. be right. So that's the way I see it anyway, but yeah. <laughs> That's a valuable piece of information um, of breaking it up. You, yeah. use, you use the analogy of uh, I've got a 10 minute set. I'll just, just, just focus on just doing one minute. Oh, I've done a minute, yeah. next minute, next minute, next minute. Yeah, by, yeah. by the end of it, you just realize, hang on, I've just done 10 minutes. Exactly. Um, yeah. And that's a valuable piece of advice. And so this podcast, the Make Mondays Interesting podcast, is all about the concept of, well, inspiring people to dream more. This is more tailored to people with that entrepreneurial mindset. And I know that we are talking about a lot of your sport background. Yeah. But yeah. that, like you just said, the mental side of things is applicable to all areas of life, especially mm -hmm. business. Cause I know myself, my situation, I've, um, I have big picture dreams. Um, but yeah, it's, it's another cliche. Let's just, I think we're using yeah. cliches. This yeah, yeah, yeah. is, um, like the, how do you eat an elephant yeah. one bite at a time? It's like, yeah, yeah. you've got to break it up and you don't, tackle it all at once but you just break it break it up yeah and so let's you know rome, pardon rome wasn't built rome wasn't built in a day rome wasn't <laughs> built in a day another another cliche um kind of switching gears from the uh rowing because yeah about studying and you talk you uh study architecture yeah um so in terms of let's just go let's just talk about this concept of taking it one step at a time. What yeah, does that yeah. look like in the architecture world of, or in terms of how you approach a pro a design project? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so for obviously anyone out there, you know, with design, you know, if let's say basic terms, if someone, you know, if a client wants a house to be built, mm. you know, there's a certain amount of drawings that need to be done, obviously, and, you know, um, obviously to be built so in a way you know we kind of just draw the instructions for a house yeah on the very basic level um but you know there's there's always you know you kind of i mean i don't do this i don't you know make a list but mentally i know what i have to do and i kind of you know just chip away at it each day um and that's um you know you know that yeah that's just the works there you have to do it there's no point you know procrastinating about it 
um you just got to do it and mm. you know and luckily for me you know i enjoy what i do and it's fun um and i learn lots of stuff as well so <laughs> um yeah so yeah it's 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 interesting <laughs> yeah um would you like to do a shameless plug of the firm are you allowed to do the shameless plug of the firm or somehow uh, put your name out there to get some clients <laughs> i'll let you have that shameless plug <laughs> Um, well, if anyone, you know, needs a, a future architect, just, uh, give me a call and, uh, <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. If you need his number, just email me and I'll pass you on. So, yeah. um, yeah, that's so good. Quiz a question. Um, all right. I've got, because it's make Monday is interesting and I want to get some, yeah. some fun stories out of you. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. So one of those stories I want to ask is, do you have any like absurd architecture stories um, of some design that you had to do that was completely out of the box absurdist? Like like design projects and stuff like that? Yeah. Um, do you have any of those? I don't think I've had... I don't think I've had too many, you know, absurd design uni assignments. Yeah. Um, I've, done, I've been pretty lucky, but I know <laughs> with all my uni assignments, I'd back in first year, like, you know, a couple of years ago, um, you know, with architecture, you know, you have to do like a, let's say like a render. So it's like a, you know, a very realistic or, you know, an image that kind of sells the project in a way. Mm um of the design so and you know through uni we use a lot of software so one of the softwares we use is photoshop so i picked that up pretty well and in i think in all my uni assignments when we've had to do like a a pretty picture to you know explain the project i've always um like photoshopped myself as like in the design <laughs> so like let's say um you know you've got like a photo showing like a courtyard just with, you know, greenery and people everywhere. You know, I like, you know, back left corner, I like put myself in it. And it's just like a little like Easter egg of myself in my own assignment. So when I, you know, get in front of my classmates at uni and stuff and I present it in front of like all my tutors and guest lecturers as well, um, you know, it gives me a giggle when I'm up there. I'm like, oh, that's me. <laughs> um, and like I've done that in every single my assignment since over the, you know, over the last four years. And I even just did one in, you know, in my assignment that I just did uh, yesterday in my master's. So it's just, you know, like as serious it is, you know, I kind of like have a little bit of fun with it along the way. Yeah. Um, like, let's be honest, like a lot of people take life very seriously and you don't need to take it that serious sometimes. Like, you know, you can just take a step back and just, mm. you know, just relax a little bit and just yeah. have a little bit of fun along the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. Figured it's no harm. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. Can I, let's talk more about that. The importance yeah. of having fun in whatever you do really with you. With yeah, yeah. Growing architecture for those listening yeah. in business. What's the importance of just having fun and not taking life too seriously? Yeah, yeah, I think it's very huge, you know, like, um, like, sorry, moving back to like one of, you know, like a, a really, you know, ro a big growing story, like my pop used to always tell me, um, which, you know, like was pretty funny back then, but like, um, like, I think it might have been in no, 1970, anyway, yeah. like, um, my pop, he had won, you know, the men's single skull for Australia and also the men's uh, four for Australia as well. Anyway, so, yeah, you know, like, uh, rowing Australia kind of, you know, told them like the four and him as well to go to the airport and they'll um, ring them at the airport to see if they're going to send the sculler, like just pop or the four to yeah. um, the world champs. I think they were in Europe somewhere at the time. And um, 
I remember Pop, he was telling me, you know, so rowing Australia, they rang him at the airport, being like, okay, like his name was Reg, being like, okay, Reggie, um, we're going to send you guys in the four to the Worlds. And Pop's oh. like, oh, okay, that's awesome. Uh, you know, that's really good. Anyway, and then he, you know, went over to his crewmates. Then he's pulled the old, um, oh, guys, they're uh, sending me in the single. I'm really sorry. <laughs> you know, type thing. And, you know, the, the crew, his other crewmates were like, oh, that, that's awesome, Reg, well done. Super you know, they were a bit down <laughs> being like, oh, damn, like, you know, we're not think, going away on a holiday type <laughs> thing. Anyway, and then Pop's like, oh, come on, guys, buy me all a beer type thing. So um, they all bought him a beer. And um, just before they were about to board, Pop's like, oh, we're all going. <laughs> <laughs> type of thing and they're like what we're all going reggie what did you do that for and type things so they're like it's you know and like there's way more stories than that uh with you know having the the funny side of the rowing yeah um but yeah it's like you know like you don't need to take anything too seriously mm. um i mean like obviously if it, if it's important and you know there are times where you do have to you know switch the mindset a little bit and you know if it's serious, you know, you have to act like it, but um, there's sometimes, you, you know, you can just take it a little easy and enjoy, enjoy life. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So. That's a good point. Just enjoy life. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so the guests be last. So by the time this episode releases last week's episode, I had, my mate Jared and he talked about fun yeah. comes after the frustration and yeah. yeah, I think it's so important just to, yeah, there's some times with serious times, there's moments of frustration, but more, I think just speaking to you right now, it sounds like there's so much importance in, Hey, after the frustration time, frustrating times, have some fun. Yeah. Don't L don't always be serious. Enjoy yeah. life. Be out yeah. there. Like, exactly. Um, yeah, I just think about the Olympics, and you would agree with me. Whenever someone wins a medal, they're not just standing still at the medal ceremony. Oh. They're pumping their arms. They're having yeah. fun. Um, yeah, yeah. Because it's that's what life's about. It's just have fun yeah. and enjoy the process. Um, yeah. <laughs> Trust yeah. the process, as everyone Trust the says. Process. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite a, a quite a overused term that a lot of people use. But yeah, um, yeah, it you do trust the process, and um, you know it, it doesn't matter if it's a small thing or it's a big thing. You you know yeah. you always kind of yeah believe in the the process, and it's yeah just working your way through it really. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, yeah, that's 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 some good words, and that's so important. Um, mm. all right, I got another question for you and maybe yeah. this will be the final question for the day, but let's go back to the, these funny stories. And I yeah. want to hear if you've got an embarrassing story from any of your rowing comps, um, that you personally experienced. Um, I think I've, I'm actually, I've been pretty well, I've done pretty well. I haven't embarrassed myself too much. Um, I was, that, yeah, I've been just telling think, us, or <laughs> no, I think I've actually learned a lot from you know, Pop and Dad, and you know, my uncle being like, All right, I won't do that. Um, <laughs> and you know, type thing. I'm just trying to think. Um, I mean, there was like, uh, I think there was like one or two races, I think there might have been one race when I was just first started rowing. And I don't know why, but obviously when you row at a regatta, you know, there's like a heat, a semi and a final. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, there's some races where there's not enough people in the race and it's, you know, just a straight final. Mm. Um, but I think one race I had might have been, you know, at a school rowing comp back in the school days. But um, I remember winning like a, a, a one race <laughs> and I thought <laughs> I thought it was a final. So I was like pretty happy at the end of it, like, you know, pretty, pretty excited. And then um then I realized like it was only a heat. And like 
and like obviously the first couple of rowers through you know it depends how many but like you know let's say top two in a heat go through to the semi mm. and then you know top few go to the final so I was like stoked that I thought I won the final but it, it was only the the heat I'm like ah oh, I gotta get through the semi and win the final to you know win <laughs> type thing and I just remember okay like just just know what your races before you know you celebrate like <laughs> um yeah so just yeah so I, I was pretty young then I still am but you know <laughs> yeah. yeah but hey um, yeah apart from that pretty good it goes to show that no matter what the race is you got to enjoy it and yeah that's it be celebratory of the small wins yeah exactly who knows we might never experience the big win uh, or we, I yeah. think, all, I think we could all experience a big win, probably not yeah. in the time that we're wanting the big win. But yeah, yeah. I, I think that's that's yeah, it's a funny story, but it's also a, a story of uh, I don't know. Hearing that makes me think about the importance of just celebrating the small wins and yeah. just having that excitement and joy. And yeah, maybe people might be like just a heat something special yeah yeah but but you got to have that attitude towards any and everything that we do so yeah yeah just keep motivated to keep going um question then so if you won that heat you moved on to the semis correct yeah yeah and did you win yeah. anything in the semis or oh uh, i think i probably got dropped out in the semi to be oh. honest <laughs> okay but hey <laughs> so, at least you yeah. had your celebratory so maybe maybe the maybe the uh the hype was worth it <laughs> yeah it was worth but, um, it by the sounds of it <laughs> yeah, yeah but um coming back to the idea what you were saying before of like enjoy you know celebrating those small things mm. like i train with you know with a, uh, a few other guys train with me and sometimes at the end of a session you know we have like a little race of like over you know like 10 15 strokes and we, yeah. you know we kind of like all right whoever you know whoever loses has to pay for coffee type thing <laughs> and you know and like there's some days where you know you've had a solid session and you you lose and you're like damn it i have to pay everyone you know buy everyone coffee now like we yeah. you know we usually go out for coffee after training and stuff yeah um and yeah and then some days you're like you won and you know your teammates won your coffee and you're, you're pretty stoked and like yeah um yeah so it's those small things you know that you know keep you going and it's yeah again you know having fun along the way so yeah 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 by the sounds of it it looks like you're in that team environment and yeah i think kind of just spinning that story in regards to whoever, whoever's listening right now when you're in those team environments have some friendly competition between yourselves have fun yeah. shout each other coffee have those friendly bets um yeah. bet little things like shouting <laughs> people coffee don't bet yeah. like material things like money but um yeah. i don't know i think what you just described there is what a healthy team culture looks like yeah, yeah. having fun having that banter and a good team environment will help for races for times when it counts yeah and because you can have an unhealthy team environment and wonder why you're losing all these races but because you have that healthy culture of, um of that friendly competition of that fun element yeah. of training i yeah. think it results in healthy team culture which then again results in success when it counts yeah. would you agree and also like yeah yeah no for sure and coming back to you know that healthy relationship mm. you know obviously you know with each year we have you know national chance with rowing and you know you race people around australia and mm. whatnot um and you know and um what i've kind of always learned was like you know you can you know your friend you know your friends with your you know your people that you're going to race against mm. like you know deep down you know okay i want to beat these guys but you know you still want to you know be friends with them in a way yeah um so what, how I've always perceived it in the same as, you know, quite a few people I know is that, you know, you're friends with them off the water, but when it's, you know, when it's serious, um, you know, when you're on the water and you, you've trained for months, you know, to get to this point, you know, you want to win this race, 
uh, sometimes, you know, it can get pretty messy out there with your, your friends. <laughs> um, but, at the, you know, when you, when you finish the race, no matter what the result is and you're off the water, you know, that's when, you know, you're, you're good mates. And, um, and it's, it's not, you know, it's not faking it or anything, you, you know, it's just, there's a time and place where, you know, okay, I'm serious. I, I want to beat these guys. I've yeah, trained a lot to get to this point. I'm not going to screw it up, you know, by trying to be their friend when I'm, you know, got better things to concentrate on. Mm. Um, and, you know, and coming from that environment as well, you know, uh, you know, with, I'm sure with a lot of sports, you know, um, as obviously, you've, you know, you've got your club level and then state and then national and then obviously international. And, you know, the teammates that you have on an international level, they're not of it some for some sports they're not the same club mates you'd have in your own club mm. so you know you could you could be you know complete enemies you know racing at national level and then you know teammates at international level if that makes mm. sense yeah so you know so you gotta you know learn to get along with each other and you know you know 90 99 percent of the time it does work out because you know no one's too serious you know you just have a bit of fun with it and at the end of the day, like rowing's just a, a hobby for me. Um, you know, it's just a very dedicated hobby. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I see it as a hobby because with hobbies, you can have a lot more fun with it in a way, I think. Um, so it's just a hobby that I, you know, dedicate a lot of time to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so if that makes sense. <laughs> That's another good piece of advice. Yeah. I think sometimes we can be pursuing something and the only way we can enjoy it is if we first see it as a hobby, which you yeah. just said. And yeah. yeah, I think that's when you know you're passionate for something. And yeah. a hobby can also be your career. Yeah, um, for sure. If you really you yeah. know, make your life you, that. If you've got the passion behind it, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's a bit, I like that. Um, yeah. it's a hobby which is why you enjoy it um, yeah. but at the same time take it ser- you're taking it seriously because it's something yeah. that you want to pursue to be able to do and reach that Olympic dream yeah um, that's it <laughs> and question because you've talked about competing against people are you much of a trash talker no um <laughs> I mean, it's, there are sometimes, unfortunately, I'm not too much of a trash talker. Um, in in a way, me saying that I'm like I'm, in a way, I'm like quite a quite achiever. Yeah. Um, that's my dad's always coached me. Yeah. Uh, not to you know talk too much trash at a start line. Um, you know, just keep your head <laughs> keep your head in the game type yeah. thing. Um. Yeah, but, you know, there are a couple of guys that have raced that are, you know, big trash talkers and the joy you get when you beat them, it is <laughs> so sweet. But I'm not, I'm not one to um, rub it in too much. But, um, yeah, it is good fun when you do beat a big trash talker. <laughs> Just, you know, the karma comes back to them. Um, but yeah, but you know, then, then, you know, there are some things, you know, some of those, I just play, you know, a bit of back, um, basketball in the backyard and I can trash talk my brothers so bad. Um, maybe probably because I know that one day they're going to be, you know, a bit better in basketball than me. Um, and I, I might as well use it while I can, while I'm still taller, but, um, <laughs> you know, so yeah, so it's also, And like, yeah, you know, coming back to trash talking, it's like, it's kind of how, not how serious or how passionate you are about the sport. Because, you know, there's a lot of sports and well, a lot of people that, you know, would do the sport and like they, you know, they trash talk a lot. That's either, Mm -hmm. you know, are they like, how hard are they, you know, pursuing that sport? Like, are they trash talking because they don't really, you know, care too much of the sport or if because you know trash talking could be one way to you know get into your enemy's head too as well so mm. it, it kind of ranges a bit so uh yeah so i'm not too much of a trash talker especially on the water there are some times when you know there is uh words being exchanged you know 
that uh, off the water, but yeah, you know, I'm not, yeah, too much of one to one talk. <laughs> You're a friendly giant. That's what I would describe I'm a, you as. I am BFG. <laughs> BFG. Um, yeah, so good. I'll admit I have done a lot of trash talking in my basketball days. Probably not as much as yeah. I think I did. But yeah, no, I, I do remember quite a bit from you, Denzel. <laughs> So, oh, Denzel, just spill it. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, all good. All right, all right, Jackson, thanks so much for having this conversation with me. I enjoyed no, hearing me. what you had to say. Um, you had a lot of wise words that aren't just applicable to uh, sport, but applicable to all areas of life, even particularly entrepreneurship. It can, those, those mentalities you mm. have, towards your competitions can be applied to how an entrepreneur should have mentalities towards running a business or pursuing a dream yeah for sure so, Definitely. yeah thanks so much yeah um, thanks Dan. thank you so much for tuning in to the make mondays interesting podcast i hope you enjoyed today's episode and i hope we have made your monday more interesting